Double. Okay. Great to have you here today. Excellent. And thank you for all the returning attendees. <clears throat> My name is Bill Combs. I'm with No Time for Social. We're a digital marketing agency based here in Round Rock. Uh, we work with local companies, uh, companies throughout the United States. We're also a sponsor of One Million Cups Round Rock. Uh, my cohort, Stephanie, she handles all the social media for One Million Cups Round Rock, the live event, uh, all those interactions via social media. We've got some of our organizing team out here today. If you're an organizer, just raise your hand. I'll just have everybody raise their hand. So we've got Josh, Cynthia, and Amy, myself in the room today. Lewis, oh, he's not raising his hand, but Lewis is there too. Uh, Mayor Craig Morgan is an honorary organizer. We brought him in as an honorary organizer on our, our one year anniversary. And I want to also thank our sponsors. So uh, obviously the Alcove, if you've never had an event here and you've got a large group of people, this is obviously a great room to come back into. We certainly appreciate uh, their, uh, their ability to have uh, us here uh, having us our presenters here for One Million Cups over the next couple months. I think in June, is it June that we switch? So I think in June we switch to the Holiday Inn uh, directly west of Rudy, so right on Chisholm Trail. And it's not the Express, but it's the one right, right behind Rudy, so that'll happen in June. Uh, Bank Corp South, Don Quick, Obviously, no time for social, I mentioned, and none of this would be possible without the chamber. So we certainly appreciate the chamber. Amy really is spearheads this whole thing uh, and tackles it. Uh, obviously, she had to get approval from Mike a couple years back to get this whole process kicked off. But it's great to have a one million ch uh, cups chapter here in Round Rock. Uh, we really sort of want to be the the focal point for Williamson County. So, uh, and I know we've had people come out from various uh, other cities within the within the county, Cedar Park, Leander, uh, I don't know if we've had some people out here from Taylor yet, but we're continuing to, to build the audience and to get more people to come out. So thank you, Round Rock Chamber, for all of your efforts to, to have this going. So, One Million Cups Round Rock, for the few new attendees here today, we have one presenter uh, that is going to be presenting their business. It'll be a six minute presentation. So they're gonna go through their business, uh, maybe some struggles that they're running into. They're gonna present the group with three questions that they would like to get answers to. Uh, it could be marketing, it could be sales. I actually haven't even looked at the questions yet, so it'll be news to me as well. Uh, so uh, Amy will be presenting three questions on, uh, on her business, and the goal is for really this room to be her advisory board, her sort of mini board of directors, for 20 minutes afterwards, getting answers to those questions, maybe some follow-up questions, but we do want to focus on those three things. So just keep that in mind. Uh, we'll leave the questions up after she's done and sort of spearhead off of those three questions. So after she's done with her six minutes, we'll go through 20 minutes of the Q&A and we'll wrap up after that. So with that said, I am going to hand the controller over to Amy White with Trans Text Licensing and Permit Solutions, Inc.
by making sure they're properly tagged, that their permits are up to date. We make sure their taxes are filed, and y'all, they pay a lot of taxes, a lot of different taxes. Um, and most recently, within the last year, we began safety, okay? So, um, many of you may not have experience in the trucking industry, but a lot goes in behind it. There's, there's a lot more than just driving a truck. And you've all benefited from it in one way or another, um, because everything that you have, pretty much, came by truck. When you go to the grocery store and you buy food for your fam, came by truck. When you go shopping for fun Christmas sweaters with your best friend, <laughs> came on a truck. Yeah, that's my best friend. She doesn't know. Um, we had fun too. Anyway, 71% um, of all the freight tonnage in the U.S. goes by truck. 10.5 billion tons of freight is moved annually, requiring over 3.6 million heavy-duty Class 8 trucks and 3.5 million drivers. That's a lot of equipment and a lot of drivers out there on our roads. So, like I said, um, it's more than just getting behind the wheel and driving a truck. It costs about $180,000 annually to operate one truck, okay? 2% of that is just permitting and licensing. But if it's not done correctly, they can put them out of business. How? DOT is one. They're responsible for all the safety for our motor carriers who are running up and down these roads. They audit. Pretty much every truck you've seen down the road, at some point that company has been audited or will be audited, and I promise you the truck's been pulled over more than once for DOT on the side of the road. They can put them out of service if they're not in compliance. And if that's not scary enough, we have the Thomas J. Hendricks <laughs> who are chomping at the bit just to a lawsuit anytime they hear the word truck and accident. So, let me just give you an example. This is one of my client's trucks. Um, last year he was on a two lane highway and a car pulled out in front of him. Um, the driver did everything he could to avoid hitting the car. He even went off the road into the woods, it's just why the front of it looks like that. But the trailer swung around and hit the man anyway. The gentleman in the car unfortunately died and it was tragic for everybody. But when this happened, DOT picked them apart. They checked everything they could, maintenance records, driver logs, drug testing, to try to find a reason that it could have been that driver's fault. Um, a lawyer will do this as well, if you're not in order. So luckily for my client, um, he was fine, not even a citation. Everything was in order. He was good to go. So this is where we come in, and this is how we can help. This is a picture of our user landing. We're fully automated, so our clients can log into their accounts 24-7. They can pull up registrations and permits if they've lost them and can't find them. They also can upload documents like drug and alcohol, driver files. Um, this is where we come in. When they do that, it notifies us that it's there. We audit it to make sure they're in compliance. If they are, they get the green light. If they're not, this is going to ding them every two days until they do. So literally, they have to just not be paying attention to their emails to be out of compliance. So we've come into this automated age, and um, so we're, we, you know, we're just starting our six-year business. But all of our business has been word of mouth because truckers like to talk, which is great. <laughs> you know, we, you know, we appreciate it. But coming into this growth phase that we're in. We need to start doing new things that we're not used to doing, and you're gonna love my questions. <laughs> so, we're, gonna, we're, gonna, we're gonna start something new. So my questions may be a little different than what you're used to hearing, but these are things that we're concerned about as we grow, that we're thinking about, and so any feedback we get, we're gonna appreciate all of it. Um, question one, do you use social media for marketing, and if so, how often do you post, and does it work for you? Um, Question two, do you have a company policy in place regarding employees and social media? And this is one that I can, I'm concerned about as we're preparing to hire. Um, I don't want anything that an employee puts on their social media affecting our business that we've worked so hard to build. Um, so I'd just like to know about that. And third, have you ever brought in a family member to work with you? If so, how did you set your boundaries between personal and uh, you know, 
work. Now, Thomas and I experienced this last year when he came to work with me full time, but you know, we're husband and wife, so we can duke it out over dinner and be okay later. Um, but you bring in an adult child, maybe the spouse of an adult child, which is, we like, you know, we'd like to be able to do that for our children if they're interested in being a part of the business, but not ruin the relationship. So I'm interested to see what you have to say, and thanks for listening to me. Excellent. Any thoughts on one, two, or three, if we want to kind of kick things off? Yes, sir. Uh, I can answer number three real quick if I'll do it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay. still risk there, but if they are going to be posting anything controversial, that their public profile be as locked down as possible. So, and, and that could be a recommendation. It doesn't need to be a policy. But again, the policy could be if there is anything detrimental that, you know, it could, it could affect their, their employment. So. Right. Good. Do you have a, for your company, a mission, vision, maybe your culture? identified or outlined for your employee that would be a suggestion and they would see the type of uh, employee you're looking for and the culture that you would like to maintain. That's a good question. I don't have anything that I would could sit down and tell you like if you were applying for a job with me about what we expect so I probably need to come up with something like that so that when we do I, we can say this is what we how we do things. I mean I know what it is but we don't really have it outlined yeah where I could sit down and tell somebody else, you yeah. know. Um, so that's good. So we need to come up with that then. Yeah, that sort of ties into like just conduct in general, right? Where you would you would want somebody to conduct themselves professionally. Right. Do you have a policy manual at this point? No, we do not. Because to this point, it's just, you know, yeah. Thomas and I, we are right. a trans tech, so But, as you but it's grow. changing quickly and it will be shortly. And sure. um, we just want to be sure that we're very careful about what we put on our social media, so we just want to not have that. <laughs> so, uh, great presentation. So, do you uh, are you limited by your growth because of um, you need help? Do you need staff help right now, and can you grow more? Or you is it you just trying to prepare for if the growth starts going? And kind of related to that, you said you ask about social media. 
but uh, word of mouth is your main source of uh, customers. Do you have competition? Are there other regulatory out there? Oh, yes. There's, there's, there's many. And, you know, we are a very small fish in a great big pond. Um, but what we're finding is that because of the type of personal service we offer, people love that. So we've got people coming to us from larger companies. I want to switch everything to you. So up until last year, I did this by myself. Um, and we did it slowly because, one, we didn't want to owe anybody any money. We want to own it free and clear. And we waited until I couldn't do it anymore by myself. And then we decided to start the safety, and we brought Thomas on. We trained him until he came full-time. He took training. And we brought him full-time. And um, so that's our focus now. Now we want, to, we want to use social media to get word out there that we are doing safety as well. We want to grow faster now. Yeah. Now that there's two of us on and we can do more, we want we want it to go faster than what it did the first five years. Okay. So. so I have a question on number one. Mm -hmm. Who is your target market, like audience? Is it the truck drivers or the companies? Um, probably the companies right now. Um, I do have a lot of owner operators and I love them all. Whether they have one or 200, they all mean something to me. Okay. But to make the money in the safety department, the larger companies, the ones we're focusing on and wanting to talk to. So, so, so on social media, like, uh, you know, LinkedIn will be something that will, you can target uh, to the company owners. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm on that, but as you can see, I don't get on that either. I don't do anything, Bill. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't do it at all. No, <laughs> okay. Answer number one, has, who uses social media for marketing and actually paid ads at this oh, point? Yeah, a couple of years. Okay. How, how well is it doing? So my audience is not, they are the companies. Yep. So it doesn't work good for me. Yep. But we still do it because we want our friends to be exposed to us. Yeah. Okay. Josh, I know you guys definitely do some stuff in Don Quick. We do. Uh, I have a question kind of along that. So like you said, it's different industries. What is your, the trucking, safety, licensing, permit solutions industry look like right now on social media? Have you looked at competitors, what they're doing, or? There are some, because I have some that come up on my feed based on the things that I'm looking at. Sure. Yeah. And some are people that I actually do business with <laughs> that don't do exactly what we do. Um, but the larger ones, um, that most of them, they are targeting the safety. Um, yeah. Because it is something that people are afraid to do on their own. Because, like I said before, if they do something incorrectly and they get audited, they can be shut down mm -hmm. or just put out of service for a while. Um, so, yeah, I do see things on there, but usually it's large, the large ones. I don't know if y'all ever heard of Foley Services, or, I mean, they're huge. Um, JJ Keller. Um, but they all have social media. Oh, yeah, and they, but they're, they're huge. They're like, like, yeah. yeah, they're the ones that we're fighting against. Yeah. But, but we're personal, you know, if you get on and you sure. look at the, their reviews, it's very, but, you know, they do. But as far as smaller ones, I don't see a lot of that. Answer on your recommendation on number two. So we have uh, Amy, uh, we have Jim Hovix as a, on, sits on the Round Rock Chamber Board. He conducts, uh, I think, every two months uh, an employee handbook. Uh, oh. Know, so they, it's like a one-hour, two-hour session. Okay. And it's, and it's free, so you you might learn something from from him. Okay, great. And what's his name again? Yeah. Jim Howitz, and I'm happy to, to share Would you comment. please? That would be Absolutely. great. And I've got your yeah. card, so if I need to ask you for it, yeah. you're not so can, I, I can connect you with Jim as well. Uh, he does many presentations from specifically for, for this subject. Oh, wonderful. It's all about employee handbook. Well, we need uh, to check into that then, because that's something we're going to need. Especially if number three is not an option, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. And, and well, I, would, I would agree um, that you may get yourself into, not hot water, but chances are that there's a higher percentage of tension if you bring in a family member yeah. than if you do not bring in a family member. Right. So, so I would you, say. How do you, you, are you keeping, just a personal question, are you gonna keep yours out or do you wanna pass it? No, I, I will not, um, probably not get any family members involved. Now, I will say that on that note, my wife, Ileana, so she's a dual language teacher, 
and she has done translations from English to Spanish for our clients that need it. Mm -hmm. But it's sort of project based, and she just, in some cases, our team members will just send stuff to her, and she translates it, and it comes back. Okay, so right? she's not in every day, but she's she's not. Okay. It's it's sort of a one off deal. But <clears throat> you were talking about forty hours a week. I think the potential is there that it's just it's tough. It is. I have not really seen a situation where a small business has built their business around all the family members being involved without tension. There being something. So I would almost recommend looking out, which is why you're going to need a policy, not only a social media policy, but a built out policy manual. I think ours is 46 pages, I think, wow. of everything, <laughs> right? Covering everything. Yeah. So well, I even thought, you know, should we bring in, you know, they would be subject to the same policies that everybody else would be. Sure. Oh, no, I, I get it. And it's just that when you have to enforce that policy, now yeah. all of a sudden no one's coming for Thanksgiving. I would recommend on number three to have roles and responsibilities laid out. Uh, so if they know their well-defined roles, then they're, they're less of a conflict that will happen. Right. And then hold them accountable. And consequences before, yeah. act, before they have a chance to act. Well, and, and I think we're, uh, in my experience, where the big problems came in is uh, they got they went over. So <laughs> they weren't real clear on when the current owner is going to exit. So their ambition and desire is probably want to take it over before you're ready to give it up. And that's where the yeah. problems happen. So if you're real clear about, hey, I get to here and I'm out, are you sure? Or, or I think that, I'd make them buy. Whatever that looks like. <laughs> Make them buy it from me. So yeah. there's no confusion on their side. They can't come complain. When am I going to get more? When do I get this? When do I get this? That's where the tension came okay. from. Right. Okay. It's like a power and struggle. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Jeff, you raised your hand on the social media ads. Can you talk a little bit about that? We do use social media, and, and, and I'm going to echo something you'd probably say is don't go it alone. It's, it is a process. Uh, yes, you can go to social media and post, but the time of day you post, the keywords you use, and how you link it with the website and the, and the keywords and the search engine optimization, there's just a lot of moving parts there that it's better to have it done by a professional uh, and just outsource it and let them help you with it. Yeah, uh, time, too. Yeah. Uh, no time? Well, time. No time. <laughs> Digital content strategy. <laughs> <laughs> I know you're going to love these. <laughs> I really didn't look at the slides. <laughs> Surprise. Uh, well, that's great information. And, and I would uh, just agree with the fact that it is a process and it does take a while to really hone in on the success. There's testing involved, there's ads management, there's audience management. And you keep up with, you keep up with what kind of hits are coming in or how much business is coming from those ads. So that as a, I could know if what I'm spending is worth bringing, bringing in what. Sure. sure. Yeah. And to that point, it's not an instant reward. It, it, it makes time. It. <laughs> yeah. So I would offer a, a counter on number three. Okay. I think you know your family best and you know the people you're bringing in. And so uh, I mean, I've seen where it actually works based on family dynamic that we knew that the family already, even outside of the business, we knew that they came together to work for the greater cause, right? To work together towards towards a better end, right? And so I have seen it where it's been very successful. Uh, everybody has their roles uh, because they're vested in it, right? They, they know you're vested in it and, and, and you want to pass it on to somebody that has just as much care and attention to, to the product and your customers as you do. But, you have to instill that and you have to model that for them uh, so that they, they can model what you're doing as well, right? And so it, it can be successful, but, but but again, I would say trust your gut on who you're bringing in because if you think if you're having any semblance that it's not going to happen or, or that there's concerns there, then obviously don't do it. But, but I have seen where it works over and over again. And, and the counter to that is as you and your husband get older, 
time away, because you've earned your time away, or you've earned a day off, or late, late or a lot of you, where the, the proper expectations will serve you best is by telling the, the younger folks, you know, if we earn this privilege here, you get, because they don't want to start taking the same privileges that you and your husband are taking because they think that, that there's some ownership or there's family, and, and they get the same thing as you do. Bingo. <laughs> that's, what I, that's what I don't want. I want them to know that, you know, we work hard for this, Well, I'll, I'll, I'll add to that real quick. When, I, when you were saying that, I was thinking kind of the same thing as the Wal Walton families, you know, Walmart. They're, they're, how many siblings and children feel like that? Jerry Jones, the football ca uh, cowboy coach, and his sons run it. And then, of course, Ross Perot. Of course, those are big names. But I also they started as well. They started as well. Wagon Bag is a good example. Yeah. And because they see the vision, they see what you put into it, and you, you know, you know them, they know you, they know their prospects. But I still think it's a good idea to have policy manual and social media and you know hopefully you've raised them right and they were not going to go out and embarrass you on social media. <laughs> <laughs> I raised them right but I still don't know about that. <laughs> so. okay. Yes sir. So I've got a quick question about uh, the lawyer, Thomas J. Henry, and all that. So uh, you said they'll go after, they'll pick apart the DOT and the lawyers will pick apart a truck, a trucking company if their permits or not. Oh, they'll look for any reason to say that it could be the truck's fault. Um, you know, drivers have hours of service. They're only allowed to drive so many hours a day. And this, you know, oh, look, they were 10 minutes over their hours of service. You were tired. Mm -hmm. That was why you had that accident. You know, they will. They'll look for a reason. Have you had your brake check lately? When's the last time you did this? Or even when it's sometimes it's clearly not the truck's fault. And and the lawyer, I know we need lawyers. I don't know if anybody ever is one. We need them. <laughs> we do need them. And, and some of them are really good, but you know we have a lot of frivolous stuff going on too <laughs> yeah. that shouldn't be. <laughs> yeah, and it costs these poor guys thousands just because the insurance goes for everybody. Not oh, yeah. even if they didn't have a wreck. Everybody it affects everybody. So. They're using social media, I can tell you that. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. So, so I'm curious, how do you convince, a, let's say, an independent driver to why it's a good idea to use your service as opposed to trying to navigate DPS by themselves? <laughs> Well, um, we really we don't really have to deal with DPS, so we're lucky for that because nobody can get through to DPS. Um, but as far as not having to mess, uh, just an independent owner operator, not having to worry about are their tags expired, are their permits expired, because like as far as permitting goes, you know if you went into a state and you weren't correctly permitted, they can shut you down and they can fine you, you know. Um, many th different things. It depends on the state, what could happen. Um, but they want to drive. They don't want to do paperwork. Most of them hate paperwork. So they just want to say, here, do it. Here's my credit card, just do it, and we're done, and um, they don't have to worry about it. It just gets done. Did anybody, has anybody in here been in the trucking industry? Has anybody? No? Y'all are missing out. <laughs> There's a truck. shortage. There is nobody more interesting a than a truck driver. Trucks they're, they're, they're really fun, good, interesting people. You should go thank one next time you're at Petro. Right. So. All right. Yeah. Thank you, Amy. Appreciate it. Right.